um, that Oscar Tavares passed away in a car accident over the weekend. One of the people who uh, first reported and tracked it down was MLB TV. One of the producers for MLB TV is our World Series correspondent. Who joins us now, Keith Casas. Keith, thanks for getting up early uh, this morning. Hey, McGraw, how you doing? All right, so so how did you guys found out? Because you guys were the ones who I, more or less broke this story last night. What happened? Well, we saw it like a lot of you guys did just on, uh, just on Twitter, the story coming out of the Dominican, and we were following along with you guys uh, as we watched the game. Um, we were all sitting there in our trailer at AT&T Park, and uh, we kind of lost track of the game there for a couple innings, just shocked when we heard the news, and uh, we were just waiting for things to come out and confirmation, and it happened pretty quickly. So we were really just following along. Uh, we were following along on Twitter with the rest of you guys, and like I said, the game kind of took a back seat there for a few innings. It was interesting because uh, I texted you uh, to find out what or what you knew. You found out that it was confirmed. Um, but then you have to think to yourself for a second, there's a World Series game going on, and it turns out of this morning, now we find out that some players, while playing the game, they found out, and they were visibly upset by the news. It was unbelievable. Yeah, Juan Perez of the uh, Giants had played with Oscar in the Dominican, and we had just had him on the set <clears throat> only a few hours before the game. I had just seen him. Uh, I had just seen him. He was a uh, kid who grew up in the Dominican, but went to high school in the Bronx and had gone back to play winter ball in the Dominican. And he apparently found out during the game and was visibly upset, like he said, in the dugout, crying, and somehow composed himself and came back. Uh, came back later in the game to hit a double and then tweeted out after the game that was for you, Oscar, with the picture of them playing in the Dominican together. So how he was able to keep himself composed and go out there on that stage, I'm not quite sure. But, yeah, tough news for him to handle on the fly like that, for and, sure. And then, of course, Fox News is or Fox TV is busy doing the game. They had to then figure out a way to sort of break the news and yet keep the – keep the the continuity of the ball game going and yet still deal with this tragic news. I, I thought they handled it about as well at, as anybody could have. Totally agree. We were all sitting there wondering how they were going to go about it. And uh, our colleague at MLB Network, who also works for Fox, Ken Rosenthal, I thought, I agree with you. They handled it about as best they could, just a straightforward report. And then they faded the black and came back to the game and moved on. Um but, yeah, a tough, a tough situation, no doubt. Uh, but I thought they handled it as best they could. I agree with you. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if you've been able to see here in uh, St. Louis, they've got uh, people are dropping off flowers and cardinal hats and shirts and candles by the Stan Musial statue down by the stadium. And, you know, it, it's – it's uh, any death of a 22-year-old is tragic. Um, the fact that he was a cardinal, the fact that he's part of the community makes it a little worse. Do we know Keith Costas – what actually happened other than this accident sometime over the weekend? I haven't seen anything other than what you've, the same that you've probably seen. He swerved off the highway. And then obviously uh, there were some pictures published of, of the car that looked pretty gruesome. So I'm sure we'll have more details as they come out. But no, we're, we're still just following along as this comes out of the Dominican like you guys are. Yeah, okay. Let's uh, talk a little World Series because the game was played last night and that that story of uh, Perez coming back and hitting uh, that that double that's a story in, in and of itself but the uh, the giants uh, are up 3 games to 2 Madison Bumgarner you have to put him up with some of the great world series pitchers of all time no doubt he's pitching as well as anybody on the planet right now and his world series track record is just unbelievable i mean I think we're probably going to see him again if we need to in a game 7 too this is a situation we're going to see like the Randy Johnson coming back where he's just going so well right now that they're going to have to go to him to get to bridge the gap, I think, between Tim Hudson and the bullpen if they need it in Game 7. But, yeah, he has the lowest ERA in World Series play now ever for someone who fits at least 25 innings. So legendary status is approaching still only 25 years old. When the Cardinals came back and won in 2011, remember, they were down three games to two. The Royals are coming home. How is the pitching set up? You mentioned Bumgarner's going to have to be ready for Game 7 if something happens. I mean, this is this is not over by a long shot. No, I feel like, I mean, who knows what's going to happen. This whole series has been, a, has been a, you know, a series of unpredictable events right in a row. But I do feel like most people have been saying this just has the feel of a, of a, of a set that's going to go to the full 7. So 
<clears throat> I don't think either any of the four starting pitchers uh, that are going to go the rest of the way are real world beaters. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, if it's hooked up to the bullpens, obviously, you'd like to favor Kansas City. But, again, it's kind of a different situation when you get to those last two games. It's all hands on deck. You could see starters. You could see all kinds of different things, and the, the Giants are definitely holding the trump card with Bumgarner being able to maybe pitch a few innings in that game seven. Yeah, uh, tonight or uh, uh, so uh, Tuesday night, I guess. Who goes Tuesday night for the Giants, and who goes for the Royals? And uh, the young pitcher for the Royals, and Jake Peavy. Yeah, um, I. It just looks to me watching this series that the Giants. Whatever it is, they've got it. They can score runs without getting a hit, not hitting the ball out of the infield. It just looks like they've got it. No doubt. And like we just said, I mean, the Royals bullpen is great, those back three guys, but the Giants have about five guys that have combined for somewhere around 35 scoreless innings this postseason. So they don't they don't shake in October. They've been there before. Bruce Bochy, I think, is – you know the best manager going right now, and they're just they've been there, they're experienced, uh, and they don't rattle, they just they find a way to get it done. How about Brandon Finnegan, the only player in the history of baseball to play in the College World Series and the Major League World Series in the same year? Completely unbelievable. I mean, a lot of our guys were saying in September when he first started getting into some uh, some big situations there for the Royals, but it really wasn't even fair to him to put him in that kind of a situation. It's asking too much of a young pitcher, a guy who hasn't been there, learning on the fly. I heard that more than a, more than a few times, that it just wasn't fair to the player. But I know he had a rough outing the other night, but that, was not, uh, that wasn't on him. He wasn't the only reason they lost that game. It's pretty incredible how he's responded. And being out there those last few days, one of the things that we were all shocked by, when you see him up close, he is not – an imposing guy, physically speaking. He's a smaller guy, but, man, he's got great stuff. And like you said, first guy to do that in history, so he's on quite a run himself. you got to wonder if going forward, um, these, you know, 100-mile-an-hour pitchers, you know, high-octane guys, you know, who spend a couple years in college, they might come up and do a, you know, stint in the bullpen sooner rather than later. If, you know, the, the Trevor Rosenthal's of the world, you know, can can skip double A or triple A, this guy can go straight from the College World Series on. You got to figure if that's the mindset of some of these GMs, if I got a guy, a hard thrower who can help in a pinch, might as well bring him up. No doubt. And the Giants have a guy, too. It hasn't maybe worked out quite as well for him in the postseason, but Hunter Strickland, who we've seen give up more than a few home runs, he only had seven appearances at the majors before they decided to put him on the postseason roster. It's kind of looked around, saw a couple injuries in the bullpen, some guys who kind of lost their way, saw him throwing 100 and said, I'll give this guy a try. You know, experience is great, but 100 miles an hour might be better. I think the strength and conditioning coach for the Giants should be let go. You got you got the guy at third base. Who was that pitcher who pitched three or four innings, uh, whatever whatever it was Saturday night? The guy looked like, I mean, who where where are these pitchers coming from that are so out of shape and yet pitch so well? He has mere fatigue. Yeah, he uh, not exactly an Adonis uh, throwing about eighty eight, eighty nine, pitching to contact, but somehow got it done. I agree. Uh, not exactly the same. Uh, the same impression we had with Finnegan. How does this guy get it done? This guy was just, uh, we were all kind of confused if he was actually the guy we were looking for when he came up on our set. <laughs> yeah. How did that guy get in uniform? Um, <laughs> all right. What are you doing now? You're back to, uh, you're, you're back to Secaucus now? Back to Secaucus. I'm on a flight in a couple hours here. Back to lovely Secaucus from Frank Lautenberg Station, your favorite landmark on the East Coast. Uh, <laughs> be following those last two games, or one game if that's all it takes, uh, uh, from New Jersey. Why don't they send you to uh, Kansas City? Why are they sending you back to New Jersey? That's just how we split it up. We have one group that goes and uh, handles the AL cities, one group that handles the NL cities, and I doubled down on the NL cities thinking I might be in the lovely uh, in the lovely gateway city, maybe talking to you guys face-to-face, but alas, that's not how it works. All right, good. Uh, Keith Casas with us, our World Series correspondent. He'll get back to Secaucus and fill us in for Game 6 and Game 7. Keith, great job. As always, fly safe, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, McGraw, thanks. You got it. Keith Casas with uh, MLB TV. He was there and uh, gave us some insight into this sad, tragic story of Oscar Traveras who uh, passed away over this past weekend, and, of course, a little World Series insight as well. Uh, 920 here on the Big 550 KTRS.